Hello, we're going to do the vocab tutorial for weeks 9 and 10. The first word on the list is abhorrent. Abhorrent, and I want you to notice that it says utterly opposed. Um, then I want you to underline loathsome and repugnant because I'm thinking you may not know those words and so you might as well learn uh, loathsome is it means hateful repugnant is it just detestable so here's what I would do I would write in two words to study abhorrent to me sounds like horrible so that's why I would put that as a definition along with a word that you learned last week which was despicable um, I think I used this on one of the tests maybe uh, that it was despicable to tr to deliberately trip a blind person well that would be an abhorrent thing to do uh, also sometimes you will hear um, when there is great political discord, disharmony between parties, sometimes the speech, in my opinion, is just filled with the most abhorrent language, abhorrent comments, hateful, loathsome, repugnant, distasteful, despicable. All of those would satisfy the defini definition of abhorrent. It's something really horrible. Um, and then the opposite would be something that's admirable. Uh, okay, I think that's enough. Look, look at the sentence. Please do not ask me to tell an untruth. Lying is abhorrent to me. Very distasteful. And then we come to the verb abhor. If you utterly detest, loathe something, hate something, I would say it's probably pretty fair that I abhor uh, political fight, political fighting. I just cannot stand it. Okay, then we come to admonish. That's a verb, and it says reprove gently but seriously. Um, I guess that's okay if you understand what it's talking about, but maybe caution. Uh, to warn of a fault. What that means is, like a teacher, if I see you doing something that is not conducive to being a scholar, like if we're reading a book and you put your head on your desk, well, you know I'm going to give you an admonition to sit up or I'm going to admonish you to sit up like a scholar because I know that that's going to help you learn better. So the opposite of admonish you would be to commend you. Like I think it's so commendable that one of my students showed up today, actually two students showed up today to recite Human Family, the poem, and I thought that was uh, such, a, such a wonderful thing. So those students definitely would not receive an admonition, but rather a commendation, although you don't have to know commendation is the opposite of admonition. Then we come to ambrosial. Notice it says extremely pleasing to taste or smell, delicious, like ambrosia, which is the food of the gods. Uh, the only way this word is used is to describe... Uh, I should say it almost always applies to food. Like if I smell a scent from perfume, I love nice smelling cologne for men and perfume for women. I just love those. I love good smells like um, colors. Those are two things that make me really happy, good smells and colors. Uh, but if I if I use that word ambrosial, I would not use that to describe, oh, I smell the most ambrosial perfume. No, but if I walk in and my sweet daughter-in-law has cooked one of her gourmet meals, I'm just going to say, oh, there's such an ambrosial smell when I open the front door, okay, because it's applying to her good food. 
Then we come to confine as a verb. Um, it says imprison. That's a literal definition. Keep in narrow, cramped quarters. Uh, on July 14, 1789, a Paris mob freed the prisoners confined, imprisoned in the Bastille. But I wonder if you have ever um, heard a teacher use this in a figurative sense, like, uh, please confine your remarks to the subject we are discussing. If you have someone who's making wisecracks uh, in a certain class period, I might ask that student to confine his remarks to those germane to the discussion. All right, confinement, that's pretty easy, right? Imprisonment. Decade, that's pretty easy. That's a period of 10 years. How many decades have you been alive? I would guess one and a half. Uh, detonate, to explode. Uh, to explode with suddenness and violence. Uh, fallout showed that a nuclear device had probably been detonated, had probably been exposed. Um, and then detonation is just the explosion. Then we come to ephemeral. And I can't remember if it's the first test over these words or the second test over these words, but ephemeral is tested often. Why? Because I suspect that this is one of those words that you would be tempted to gloss over because you did not know it. Well, this one you can learn. Do you know the word fleeting? I would circle fleeting. I would circle short-lived. Um, I don't think that I would study the literal definition of lasting one day only because most of the time we don't really use it to describe something that lasts one day. Uh, we might talk about uh, fame being fleeting or we might talk about success being fleeting. Uh, do you just, excuse me, do you want to study while I finish this? Because <laughs> it might be hard to concentrate. Okay, um, so we could talk about fame or success being ephemeral, very short lived. Okay, and then the antonym you see is permanent. Um, okay, then we come to gullible. I would underline easily deceived. Um, you know how you, when you were younger, I'm sure that you played tricks on your younger siblings like, Mikey, look over there, and you grab his french fry, and he falls for it every time because he's so gullible. You know, as we grow up, we are supposed to be less gullible. Notice, however, that there's a definition given credulous. I want you to learn this. I promise I'm going to put it on the quiz each week because it's an important word. Credulous means you believe things easily without a lot of supporting facts. And that's why I don't like uh, misinformation being communicated. Um, sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's unintentional, but I don't want you guys to be credulous. You're old enough now to question anything that someone tells you. If they come out with some outrageous statement, like, um, well, I don't want to embarrass a student by giving an example of something that happened in class recently. But I'm always going to ask you for your source because uh, I'm not a credulous person. I don't believe easily. I have to be convinced uh, with supporting facts. Now, notice that the opposite of gullible, the opposite of credulous is astute. If you don't know what that word means, why don't you write out beside it sharp. You're very sharp, not like in a point of something, but mentally sharp. You're observant and you're, um, you're, you're sharp, you're shrewd, you're clever, and you're not going to fall for tricks. Okay, then we come to gull as a verb, and it just means to deceive, to cheat, to gull someone. I guess used car salesmen are frequently um, accused of gulling customers into buying lemons. Then we come to haggle. I would definitely circle the word bargain. Um, if you've ever seen two people haggle, maybe you go to a garage sale and you 
you see to the the owner and the customer haggling over the price of something then we come to immerse the literal definition is to plunge or place into a liquid to dip to duck under the water I filled a basin with lukewarm water and immersed my foot in it but the figurative definition will also be tested and the figurative indefin definition is engross absorb and look at the sentence she is immersed in her book she doesn't even know the bell rang because she is so immersed engrossed absorbed in her book and then immersion is just uh, the state of being beneath the water or being engrossed in the book um, some people believe in baptism like some religions believe in baptism by sprinkling and then there are other religions that follow the practice of baptism baptism by immersion totally taking somebody underneath the water dipping them into the water then we come to insomniac a person suffering from insomnia oh because i skipped insomnia the inability to sleep or a sleeplessness uh, abnormal wakefulness uh, there are many people who suffer from this and i feel so sorry for them um, they can spend several hours not a night not because they're on their phones awake but because they just toss and turn trying to fall asleep and cannot then we come to lapse i would recommend that you underline accidental mistake but I really like my personal definition better, which is a temporary slip. Like you have a mess up, but it's very temporary. Uh, like if you're normally polite, a lapse in manners could make you forget to say please or forget to say thank you. Normally you have good manners, but you might have a lapse one day because your mind was on something else. Um, and then this can also be a verb like you could um, you could have decided to start making flashcards every every week in the first six weeks but maybe the second six weeks you lapsed back into your bad habit of procrastination so that would be used as a verb and then another way that it's used as a verb is on your paper it says to become invalid to cease being in force and that would be like if you accidentally let your passport lapse or your driver's license lapse and so now it's not valid and you have to start the process of getting a brand new one then we come to probe which can be a noun or a verb a probe is as a noun is an investigation but if you use probe as a verb it would be investigate um, like the example sentence a probe that word a in front of probe tells me it's going to be used as a noun in investigation a probe is being conducted to learn what happened to those missing funds but if I wanted to use that as a verb I could say uh, the surgeon probed all the area of the I can't think of anything that's not gross. I think all medical stuff is gross, but necessary. Okay, uh, a prober is an investigator. That's an odd word, not really used very much in real life. Render as a verb. Okay, there's two important things to study with render. One is, like they said in this definition, to deliver as a verdict. It's always used like the jury rendered its decision. The jury rendered its verdict, delivered its verdict. But I want you to also know that render is a synonym of the verb make. For example, an illness might render you unable to work. An illness might make you unable to work uh, or walk. I think is actually what I had written down or a shocking sight might render you speechless a shocking sight might make you speechless so you need to know that about render 
but the the noun rendering it's a thing it's a presentation or I would really study an artistic interpretation I would add an artistic in front of interpretation for example a song is a rendering a drawing a painting a theatrical performance is a rendering like I might say I enjoyed Gracie Hall's rendering of or Kath, I think it was Kathleen Williams I enjoyed her rendering of Eliza Doolittle a couple of years ago okay then we come to repast that word is pronounced repast and it's just a fancy word highfalutin word for the word meal um, I always enjoy my evening repast. Okay, replenish, I would just circle one word and study it, refill. Uh, every 200 miles, we stopped at a service station to replenish, to refill the gas tank. Score, um, you need to just circle the word 20. Uh, you remember Abraham Lincoln's famous speech, four score and seven years ago, four times 20. 80 plus seven years ago so look at the sentence we have 19 signatures already and if we get one more we'll have an even score then the next word snub as a noun I would underline the word um, insult and uh, do you know the word rebuff I, I bet you don't um, do you know the word slight I don't mean like I got a slight amount of food on my plate. No, like a slight, like an insult. Um, why did Sharon invite everyone but me? Was it just an oversight or was it a deliberate snub? Was it a deliberate insult, a slight? Okay, and then we come to the verb. To snub someone is to insult them, to treat with disdain or contempt to slight them. Why did she invite everyone to the birthday party but me? Um, she snubbed me. Okay, then we come to suture. And I just, this is just a fancy word for stitches. Like if you fall and cut your, bust your lip, uh, how many sutures is it going to take the doctor to put you back together? All right, unwittingly, I would definitely circle unintentionally inadvertently if you don't know that synonym you need to learn it I would also write one just out to the side and study it unknowingly if I unwittingly uh, ignore you it's almost certainly because I unknowingly ignored you like sometimes people will students will wave to me down the hall and uh, because I don't wear glasses, I can't really see too well. So um, sometimes I wave back without knowing who I'm, I'm waving to. But other times, uh, I really just am standing there confused. And so I probably unwittingly send the message that I'm not being friendly, but it's really just like I can't even see who that is. All right, that's it. And uh, this is so doable. Please uh, study these words. It wouldn't hurt to make physical flashcards. Uh, if you haven't tried that yet, give it a shot. But anyway, thank you for your time. Goodbye.